You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. The Winnipeg Jewish Theatre has reprised their 2018 production of Becoming Dr. Ruth by Marc St. Germain in a new video on-demand show, once again starring the one and only Mariam Bernstein. She's joined me with more details on the show. Hello. Hi, Simon. Oh, wonderful to connect with you. Um, I, I do want to start off by talking a little bit about Dr. Ruth. Just in case anybody needs a refresher, who, who is she? Dr. Ruth is an internationally renowned sex therapist. Uh, she's now 92, I believe. And uh, she was really the first one to bring talking about sex into the public venue. She, she revolutionized how people talk and think about sex in the, in the 80s in particular, 80s and 90s. Um, well, I, I appreciate the refresher um, because I, I do not remember watching Dr. Ruth. I, I wasn't around for it, but I, I most certainly know who she is. And I, I know that she's lived an incredible life. Like you say, 92, still alive today. And before she became uh, a media star and, and North America's most iconic sex therapist, she survived the Holocaust and, and the terrors of the Second World War. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about those early years? Oh, absolutely. A lot of the play has to do with those early years. And um, most people are not aware of this. She, she, was take, she was sent on, she was a part of the kinder transport in World mm -hmm. War II. So she was sent away from her parents and her loving grandmother and her very loving home to an orphanage in Switzerland where she spent six years. Uh, needless to say, she never saw her parents or grandmother uh, or other family members again. Uh, because they were all killed in the Holocaust. Um, and so she spent six years in this orphanage. And at the end of the war, there was no place for her to go. So many of those kids had nowhere to go because their parents hadn't survived. And then she went to Palestine, which is now Israel. And she uh, worked on a kibbutz and became a, um, a sniper for the Jewish underground army, the, the Haganah. And, you know, so she was um, there for the uh, part of the establishing of the, of the Jewish state. Um, she has, ha she had two marriages before her very successful third marriage. Um, she was a single mother in the late 50s and early 60s in the United States. She, she was just a groundbreaker in so many ways and such a survivor and, and so resilient in the face of adversity. Just an extraordinary woman. Um, just listening to you recount that story, and of course, um, her life's story, uh, becoming Dr. Ruth, is, is what's on stage. Now, this a one-woman show originally directed for stage, as I mentioned back in 2018, by, by Debbie Patterson, and it was a role that you starred in then, and a role for which you won a Winnipeg Theatre Award for Outstanding Lead Actress. H how does it feel to, to return to the work a few years later? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, it, it, you know, it's very familiar because um, I had done a lot of research and, um, you know, knew the character, knew the story, knew mm -hmm. the arc of, of the story. I now had it under my belt, how it works with an audience, which was very helpful, which I didn't have the first time. Um, honestly, it's, it's been different this time around, uh, obviously because there's no audience. Um, it's, it's different doing it in the pandemic um, just because I feel that every story we can get about overcoming adversity and making the best of what we are given uh, is useful and helpful in this very bizarre period we're in. Um, and uh, it's different too in that since, since the first show, my father died mm. and uh, that actually had an impact on me too. Just, you know, um, that loss because you know when i got to the sections about the loss of her parents of course it was very very different for her she was 10. she was 10. i had my father for much longer but it still um it still resonates in a different way and it was also just kind of cool because i actually figured some things out that i never completely figured out in the first one just little actor things the audience wouldn't know the difference but i went oh that's how that works okay so it, it's been really fun going back to it and it was just a joy to be in a rehearsal hall again, however socially distanced and masked it was. It was just great. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about the, the loss of your father. Um, and of course, the, the loss of a parent at, at any age is, is a tremendous loss. Um, but it is um, 
you know, in terms of finding a silver lining and, and translating that to the performance. Um, uh, one thing that I was kind of curious about, as you say, uh, this was a, a big hit back in 2018 for, for Winnipeg Jewish Theatre. Um, the audience loved it. There is no audience this time around. Uh, at least you can't see them. But with, with the, the lights on and the camera rolling, did it feel more Dr. Ruth in a way, you know, thinking of her as a, a media star in front of the camera? Did, did that also translate for you? That, um, it didn't feel that way because um, very much at the beginning of the play, she establishes that we're in a theater. Mm. At the beginning of the show. So, so it was very much a one-on-one -on -one with me with the audience, but fortunately I could draw on my memory of that um, and, and imagine the people there. Uh, and um, it, was, it, it, was, it was an adjustment to go back to where I was used to having the laughs and being able to breathe into the next transition and, and, and that wasn't there. Um, but, you know, you, you, you do what you can. And as I say, I was really lucky in that I had performed it. So I knew what the feelings of it were across. It was actually, in a way, certain parts of it were easier hmm. because I didn't have to project to the back of the theater. And so for the more intimate sections, and there are quite a few of them, I could just bring it right down and make it very intimate as though I were just talking to this very close group of people to me that were very near me and I could just talk as I do normally. And that's, which is of course better for the camera anyway. So uh, that was actually great. <laughs> that felt really great. <laughs> Um, now, it's it's a show uh, that runs uh, from uh, February 8th, from, from Monday through the 14th, and it's a video on demand. So, so when people get the link, they can watch it, they can watch it again, they can watch it as, as many times as, as they like through that 48-hour period. Right. Um, I, I know you touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, I'd just like to kind of hammer this point home one more time. I mean, I, I was reading the message in the program from artistic director Ari Weinberg, and, and he talked about how he knew that he would bring back the show Becoming Dr. Ruth. And, and I'm curious, one more time, why, why do you think this was the time to, to welcome Dr. Ruth back into our lives? Well, there, the reasons are practical and um, emotional. Uh, the practical reason was it was a one person show and in the middle of the pandemic, it's the easiest and one set, it was very easy to shoot. Um, but the most important reason is she, her story really talks to people. Um, you're hooked because we know, we know what an amazing and interesting person she is all the time, just because of who she is and her presence and the way she talks and the way she thinks and the way she deals with sex with humor and compassion. Um, it's, very, uh, it's very enjoyable and familiar to people. But uh, as I say, in, this is the time in particular, even more so than the first time, uh, for the general audience, because hers is a story of overcoming um, obstacles and um, what is the word? <laughs> overcoming perseverance. Adversity. It feels like pers adversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adversity, and yeah, and and she just always had to pick herself up and move on and find. And she doggedly pursued her goals. And when a goal shifted, she doggedly pursued that. And she was passionate about having a family. She knew how much family meant to her. And um, she, she always felt that because she survived by fluke, mm -hmm. by luck, she was sent to Switzerland. And the children sent to the other continental European orphanages, most of them did not survive because they, their countries were invaded by the Nazis. Switzerland was not. And so she survived and she's always felt this obligation to make the most of her life. So, um, and to give back to, to, she is a living embodiment of the um, Hebrew phrase and Jewish concept of tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. And she lives every day of her life that way, helping the world, making the world a better place. And so for all of us, that is just such an inspiration that the, the things she had to overcome that I can't even imagine. And she's an inspiration to all of us. And, you know, you sort of go, we can get through this. We can get through this. What she got through that. We can, we can get through this. And we remember what's important. That's the other thing she always did. She always knew what was most important to her. And it's, it's a wonderful uh, shining example for us all.
It most certainly is. Uh, Mariam, thanks so much for taking the time today. And, oh, and my pleasure. Thank you, Simon. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you as well. Mariam Bernstein stars in Becoming Dr. Ruth by Mark St. Germain, the Winnipeg Jewish Theatre production in a video on demand. You can find more details at classic107.com or wjt.ca. 